Hey, I'm Kayvon, founder of Bells of Steel, and this is the Dreadmill, which is my most highly anticipated product of the year, and I think it might be yours too, once you try it. And today I'm gonna take you through about 15 of the different exercises you can do with it. And then at the end, I'm gonna go through, you know, why I designed it and how this came to be and why it's the perfect fit for your home gym. So let's get into it. So, First thing I'm gonna do is just a simple walk. And what I like about this style of treadmill, this is a flywheel drive, as opposed to like a motorized treadmill or even the curved treadmills that we sell. So it kind of gives you a little bit of the best of both the worlds. So a little bit less expensive than the curve, uh, but you still actually have to move that belt yourself. There's no motor on it. So you're, you're using that, your body to move that. And on the treadmill, you actually have different levels of resistance. So if you wanna go for uh, you know, a harder incline walk, then you can crank this all the way down to like an eight resistance and just <clears throat> really lean into it. I have always been of the opinion that incline walking is the best kind of, I won't say conditioning, but like exercise that you can do. I remember really reading the bodybuilding magazines when I was young, and they'd always say bodybuilders they'd want to do incline walking when they're getting ready for a show because it preserved the most muscle and burned the most fat. You got to spend more time doing it, but it's like the best of the best. So this also has several, like three incline options. It's not a super steep incline, but it's something. All right, and then what's also nice about the flywheel itself because you're having to push that like resistance, um, it's really good for like other drills, like backwards walking, even sideways walking. So I'll show you right now what that looks like. And then also future proofing this, we're working on a vest right now where you'll be able to like hook resistance bands onto it, which anyone who's ever, uh, you know, played a field sport, you know, your coaches, often love doing uh, kind of step drills with resistance bands on them. Uh, right now you can hook this onto our belt, our uh, bell squat belt, which I can show you in a bit, but yeah. It's nice having the resistance and being able to do like a backwards walk. It just like gives your, gives your uh, legs just super good burner at the end of the workout or even like a warm up and uh, a little more technical, you know? As you get older, it's important to uh, do these kind of different things like walk backwards walking or getting up off of a floor, uh, just keeping yourself a little more agile, a little more mobile. And then when you're younger, getting ready for sports, you know, stuff like this is, is, is integral as well. And I like doing it because, you know, get a little boring just walking on a treadmill all the time. Let's mix it up. I'm uh, easily distracted. Next, I'm gonna get into slide functionality on this. This doubles as kind of like a mock sled push. And in my early days of training, sled pushes, and this is like before sled pushes were really a thing, uh, it was hard to get one. But when I did get one, I did a ton of sled pushing. It's really good for your body. When you think strength and conditioning, the conditioning side of it, I always think sled pushes and carries. Those are like the, or, or sled drags. Sled drags, pushes, carries. Those are like the conditioning of strength and conditioning to me, the most integral kind of things. So this, you know, you're in a home gym. I'm always trying to design stuff for home gyms first, right? So if I, well, the steel, yeah, we sell the gyms, we sell the light commercial gyms, we sell the military, police, all that. But my focus whenever I'm designing something is always on the home gym community. And something I always miss in my gym is, is those sled pushes and those carries. So I'll give you a quick demo. Hopefully my glasses don't fall off. So yeah, just pop your shoulders down. And there's even a little hanger here, put your phone. You could do a nice long sled push. Watch a little show. Watch some Sopranos. 
Now the resistance you're gonna get on here compared to say like an actual push sled, not as much. And the same goes for the carries, which I'm gonna show you next. But you can add some resistance with bands, maybe even a cable tower if you want to get really creative. Maybe I'll do that today, we'll see. But it gets you most of the way there and it gets you a good conditioning workout that you couldn't otherwise do in your home gym. But again, like I said with the sled push, to me carries are that other essential part of conditioning. And again, I'm thinking, I'm always thinking of the home gym community when I'm doing this stuff and like, you can't really do great carries in your home gym. Uh, some people say, oh, just grab a pair of 150 pound dumbbells and rip around. Well, one, not everybody has like 150 pound dumbbells. And two, like, you gotta do a lot of, like a lot of ripping around. And three, you'd be surprised if you've never done a farmer's carry before, you'd be surprised how strong you are when it comes to them. You know, I remember when I would compete in strongman back in my 20s, you know, you put a lot of weight on there. I can't remember the amateur competition I did, but I don't know, 200, 250 pounds a hand. You know, the pros are getting up to in the threes. Like, there's not a lot of 200 pound dumbbells kicking around. Or even in this case, you know, I got 135 on each side. Like, it's not a lot of 135 pound dumbbells. Also like crazy awkward. You know, you'd be better off with one of our open trap bars. But again, you know, you're gonna just be walking back and forth, pacing your gym like, hoping not to trip on stuff. I don't know, it's not the best experience. I'd rather do something like this. So I'll show you how it goes. What I like about this too, it's got these safeties, so you're not gonna flip it over, but it kind of gets you in a position to lean forward. And whenever I was being coached by my old strongman coach, he'd always try to get us to grip it a little further back. So we'd lean forward a bit because the first thing that's gonna happen in a farmer's carry competition is your grip's gonna go. So the faster you go, the better you're gonna do. Maybe that's not sage advice for these days when you, maybe if you have a 350 pound carry, that's not great, but that's what we always do is kind of cheat the handle back, push ourselves forward. It's a great mimic for that. The next stuff I'm gonna get into is like the secondary design of this. So the primary design is obviously the treadmill itself, the sled, the farmer's carry, but that alone is kind of like a bit limited, right? Like I'm always thinking, how do I get the most square footage out of somebody's gym? Uh, how uh, the most use out of somebody's square footage of their gym and their money? How do you get the most, you know, out of their money, right? People, this is a $2,000 unit at the time of this video, around $2,000. It's a lot of money, right? Just on one thing. And you know, a decent treadmill will run you $2,000 in general. So how do, I, how do I squeeze every bit of juice out of every square foot of somebody's gym? So what you can actually do with this, it's folding, right? So the folding not only saves you a bit of space when it's not in use, with the arms, it's not a ton of space, but what it actually does is it creates like a lever arm station, which is something you wouldn't really think about when just looking at this. Uh, let me show you this, the incline functionality here too. This is how the incline works. It's not that big of a difference, but it's something. We can just pull on the bar and adjust it however you want it. And then the folding mechanism, it's like a pneumatic arm, it's locked in and then you drop it. Oops and it kind of slow, it's like goes down slowly. So, you know, you gotta drop that on your big toe and break it. So yeah, you got that folded up and you've kind of created this lever arm station. And there's a couple products that we sell that uh, have been really interesting to see how like the community uses them, like all those tinkers out there and that's a big part of my design too, is I'm a big tinker. Um, I think it makes the, the workouts more fun, especially as you get like, yeah, I've been lifting weights since I was 12. 30, 38 now, 37, I don't remember. And uh, 
you know, I used to just like iron, you know, dumbbells, barbells, that's it. That's the purest form of weightlifting. Or even I guess body weight would be. But as I get older, it's kind of like a little bit boring and I like to mix it up and do cool things, you know, and, and I'd be able to like have an entertaining workout, not just like crushing barbells so I can get my deadlift up to 600 pounds. Uh, a lot of the time these days too, I'm like, I'm chasing a pump, right? <laughs> when I was younger, I'd be more of chasing like strength and you know, whatever, maybe a bit of a pump. You know, I used to be a bouncer and on the weekends, you know, on Friday nights or, sat or Saturdays before the club, we can go and get a good drop, good drop sets in and pump up our arms and chest and, you know, inflate ourselves a little bit. So I find myself these days chasing that pump more than I am necessarily trying to increase my deadlift or my squat or bench or whatever. I'm just chasing that pump, that feeling. What if something again, you know? So dead inside. No, that's not true. Very happy, man. Um, and I, I find that Smith machines, uh, machines like these lever style machines, like fixed pathways, I do find I can get really great, or, or cable, like cable machines, I do find that I can get to that pump easier and faster and it feels nicer. Anyways, so if you're a tinkerer like me, you're gonna love this part. So I'm gonna kind of show you in order of like goodness. Like I'm gonna show you a litany of exercises you can do and some of them are gonna be better than others in as far as like feel and quality goes. So I'll start with the ones that I feel are actually better than their counters, like a dumbbell or a barbell or a Smith even. And then I'll kind of work back into ones that like you can get adventurous with, but like maybe you're pushing the limit of like, you know, just just go get a dumbbell, don't do that. But anyways, I'm gonna get into that. I'm gonna do a little setup and you'll see me in the jump kit cut in about a minute. Welcome back. So you can see I put the treadmill up and I got myself a buzzsaw bench. And I'm gonna show you probably the, my favorite movement so far, which is the decline press. I haven't done a lot of decline press over the years because it, it's always like, it's extremely awkward and kind of dangerous. Uh, I don't know if you've done them at home, but uh, you know, if you do it with like a decline, with like dumbbells, uh, even on your blitz, on your um, butt saw, which has a like, I don't have the leg hook on this one, which I should right now but uh, you sit back and you throw the dumbbells back on you and start pressing. It's just, it's not a great user experience, if you will. Uh, so that's why I actually like this version of it better is because it's fixed and you kind of just lie down and well, I'm gonna show you right now. So you lie down, you can get under it nicely. And now these arms are a bit wide to be doing like, you know, perfectly comfortable presses and rows with. But I get a great squeeze here working out on this last night, coming up with a whole bunch of exercises for you guys. So I'm pretty, pretty sore today. And uh, I think some wide grip is, you know, great to work in and you can get a really great depth with it too. And you got that safety element taken care of. So I'd say out of everything, the decline is probably the most practical and actually superior to doing a decline with like a dumbbell or a barbell never done a decline on like an actual machine because um, I don't think a lot of gyms would, would would spring for that. It's a little much. I'm going to show you now one row variation. And when my brother and I were working out on this last night, this was his favorite. He liked it without the bench better, but I'm going to show it with the bench. And so I'll just talk as I go through. Oh, so that's something I can show you while I'm doing this that you haven't seen yet is the J cups on here. So these are actually adjustable J cups. So you can put them down actually, but for the row, I'm gonna actually take them right off and get down, right down. Do it on the other side. And then just while I'm down here, moving stuff around, I'll show you these safety spotters. So these are actually spotters to prevent you from, um, while you're walking, if you're leaning too far forward to prevent the arm from actually flipping over. But when you're using it as a lever arm, 
uh, and you want some more range of motion, you just gotta make sure that you have a pair of our uh, trusty collars on, and then you can actually get a much better range of motion depending on the exercise you're doing. Let me just take that out. The screw's out. Put that back in, so we'll lose that screw. And now I don't recommend you go flipping around. Uh, you know, it's still not, not the safest thing to do, but if you want some more range of motion, throw a pair of collars on, squeeze them down, and I guess this is a testament to the magnetic collars in general, but you can even go right upside down. Not that I recommend that. Now, I rec now you should have those safeties in while you're doing the walking so you don't get too far forward. And it's also like a resistance thing too. Like if you get them too high up, it kind of changes the dynamic. But yeah, anyway, so let's jump into the row. So you can get a nice squeeze. It's a little, like I said on the bench, might be a little wide, but if you're finding that, you know, if you're not as broad as some, you just move it over a little bit, do them one at a time and you can get them at exactly the angle you want. And this goes for rows, it goes for bench, it goes for whatever. If you just do it one at a time and you can get it more into a position that is comfortable. <sighs> oh, and then you can get a great squeeze. And get that blood, get that pump. Oh, shakes that pump. So those are a couple of my favorite with the bench. I'm gonna take this bench right back. I'm gonna show you the rest of my favorites, which are mostly without the bench. See you in a second. So we're back, taking that bench back out. And now I'm gonna show you some more movements, uh, mostly legs that you can do. So I'm gonna start off with a split squat. I don't know if the right term is split squat or lunge. I think lunges are when you actually step out and split squats are when you're fixed. So. Now, if you need a better range of motion, you can take these cups right off, right? But I put them in because I don't want to bend down so far. And I know a big part of lunges are like working on your single leg stability and whatever, but sometimes I just want to be able to work out and not be tipping over and, you know, could throw a bit more weight on. And I can still work on my single legs at a time because they are disproportionate in strength without having to like, you know, worry about how long can I keep my balance instead of how many reps I can do. So that's a really cool one for lunges. And then I'll show you uh, some of the rows without the bench. So I've been finding that the strength curve when you stand within this, so this is like, this is up, it's fully secured. You don't have to worry about it bopping you. Even if you didn't fully secure it, you accidentally didn't get it fully locked in. Again, it is dramatic, so it's just gonna whack you in the back of the head and give you a concussion or something. So I have been finding that the strength curve on some exercises is better in here than it is on the other side. But again, it's what I love about pieces like this. You can tinker around, find out what feels good, what works best for you, or even just like mix it up. Like one day you're doing it on the inside for one curve, one day you're doing it on the outside for the other curve. So this was my brother's favorite one. My brother, my little brother works for Bells of Steel and he helps me in a lot of the product development. And uh, he was really enjoying this one, just like a single arm row. And felt that the pump and the curve on it was better than a dumbbell row. And of course you could put your bench in here and do the same thing, but he liked the standing one. The other things, well, yeah, a couple more I'll go into. 
Romanian or stiff like deadlifts. I've never <laughs> done these much. I don't have great form on them. So uh, save your comments for your own internal notes. Again, I, I really like that fixed curve, right? Like of the lever arm, you know, kind of like you normally have when you go to a commercial gym and you get to use those big whatever hammer strength machines that are uh, plate loaded, but on a set curve. And I do really enjoy it just for being able to crank out more reps and uh, get a better pump and not have to worry as much about like the stability and form of free weights. I just want to get stuff done. I think that's a great example. I've always really struggled with the form on Romanian deadlifts and I felt a lot more comfortable than doing them with a barbell or a dumbbell or stiff like deadlifts. I'm going to show you a couple like maybe like uh, further fetched ones you can see yourself doing but uh, I'm going to show you anyways. Forgot to show you a few more before changing the levels. So this next one I'm gonna do is uh, weighted calf, standing calf raises. I've got a squat wedge here. Probably not the best thing for doing a, a calf raise, but we'll make it work. So. Get that nice range of motion. I'm a little further, I'm a little too far back right now. You know what? I'm gonna kick that in. There we go, that's nicer. Yeah, so you get that nice range of motion. You know, like I said, this is a squat wedge. Not something I typically recommend for this, but uh, you know, you work with what you got, not what you hope for. Maybe we'll have to come up with a calf block. Let me know what you think. <clears throat> now I only got one plate on here just so I can get through these exercises and still actually talk to you. The next thing I'm gonna do is shrugs. So what I was talking earlier about the weight capacity of this, that weight capacity applies to the treadmill. That's what you gotta worry about. If you're doing a workout on this, now the pegs aren't that long, but if you have calibrated plates, you could stack up pretty high on these. But if you're doing this, the weight capacity without the treadmill, you know, it's basically a bearing, you know, a bearing with a, a thick piece of steel going through. You'd have to be get pretty creative and you'd have to be pretty crazy strong to break that. Uh, but I say my recommendation based on how much you could actually probably fit on here and conservatively 450 pounds aside, you wouldn't probably want to push it much more than that. I did talk to my supplier, the factory makes this. He said probably closer to 300 kgs, 660 aside. Um, but let's dial it back a little bit. Let's be, let's keep it a little safer. And maybe go, maybe go for like a 450 pound each side. So when would you ever want to do that? Well, maybe when you were doing shrugs. So I'm gonna do some shrugs right now. Again, you can do it from the inside, you can do it from the outside. I'm gonna do these from the outside. I feel like it would work better. But again, this is your, this is your Lego piece. So you got a nice deep shrug on that. I used to love shrugs. When I first started working out, I wanted to be, I wanted to look like Goldberg. So I'd go in and I'd just do like 30 minutes of shrugs, different variations. But it built up a nice big yoke that's been with me the rest of my life, which is compensated for not having abs. Yeah. Next one I'm gonna go, I'm gonna try it with the, uh, I think this should be a good, good height for it. But we'll do a little seated shoulder press. This is a pretty uncommon exercise, not something you typically do in a gym, definitely more advanced. Something I used to see more in the kettlebell world, you know, when we do like a goblet press or they do, they do a press like this, I will say they, let's do kettlebells too. You do a press like this where you'd be fully kind of sprawled out like this and you'd single press while sitting to like, you know, engage your core more and build more body awareness and all that jazz. So I'm gonna do that right now with this. I think I could probably set these a bit higher, start from here, but uh, I wanna keep the flow 
the video going. But just a reminder, you do have five different heights on here. But I got I got pretty lightweight on here, so. So again, I probably need to tinker around with my positioning a bit more. It's a little bit out of place. Um, but we don't, we don't got time for that right now. Now, I'm gonna take the J-Cups fully out just to show you the kind of depth and range you can get for say if you want to do a uh, what do they call that when you stand on a block and deadlift so you actually go further out of your human range whatever that's called that's kind of similar to what I'm gonna do right now so of course you could do like a a uh, it's almost like more similar to like a car deadlift or a snatch deadlift where your arms are wider out right because that base is wider it's getting a little wider out kind of like a berserker press is a little wider too so Let's take these fully out. Let's try it this way. So you can get that pretty big range of motion on here for your deadlifts, kind of hex bar style deadlifts. So I hope you enjoyed all these different exercises you could do with the treadmill. I think I said 15 exercises at the start. I probably got my math wrong. It's not my strong suit. However, there's a lot more than 10 or 15 exercises that you can do with this. It's really just up to you to get more creative. And depending on what equipment you have, um, you know, one example is, is if you have a cable tower in it, Maybe set that cable tower up in the proximity of your treadmill. Put your dead, put your uh, belt squat belt on. Hook it up to your cable tower and do just walking sled drags with like a heavy weight on the cable tower, or even you know working your sand, like sandbag carries into it, or even just doing a whole variety of other lever arm exercises that you discover. Or even, you know, getting creative with bands and integrating bands into it. Maybe doing like a, you know, a uh, highly uh, volatile band press with it. So I think the, the sky's the limit. And much like the cable tower, which since it's been out in the community, I've seen like crazy creativity. Same with the lever arms. And not only have we seen creativity, I've actually been seeing like Etsy sellers and, and, and people on Instagram creating a little side business for themselves, selling these like cool, wacky accessories for, um, you know, the cable tower that we're not currently carrying or maybe never will because it's like pretty niche, but they are able to cook that up and come up with some pretty cool ideas. So I think in a, in a, in a year's time, you're going to be seeing that kind of same creativity with the treadmill once it gets out into the world. And like I said, I think this is my favorite product that I've released ever. It's a big statement, but it's up there. And uh, I hope you love it as much as I do. And you can buy yours in the link below. And once you get it, let the gains begin. Hey folks, Gabe on here, founder of Bells of Steel. I hope you loved that video. Be sure to smash that like button and leave a comment below. And if you want any of the awesome home gym equipment you saw in this video, be sure to follow the links in the description and let the gains begin.